Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Guess what? The wind finally came to an end. It feels just beautiful. It really feels like spring is suddenly back. Such a game changer. Beautiful. We're expecting, I think, 11 degrees Celsius today during the day, which is 52 Fahrenheit if I'm not completely wrong. I'm not so good with that. I was never really good in math. Um, but I need to try to remind myself to really uh, sprinkle in inches and far and how whenever I talk about any kind of measurements because I know a lot of you come from the US and Canada so I think it's really good to do it but what I want to do today is something that I actually want to focus on during this entire week I want to plant some hardwoods with you because I garden in a zone 7b and planting hardwoods at this time of the year is perfect here because um, it really takes quite a lot of time for the first hot temperatures to arrive so I think summer with the real first hot days arrives earliest probably like mid late June I would say so you can tell that there is quite a long time from now up and then when we have mild temperatures and quite consistent mild temperatures which is really lovely and shrubs and plants really have the opportunity to uh, establish in well and build a nice good strong root system so this is why I will dedicate this week only to hardwoods well pretty much only to hardwoods I need to see uh, what I want to do is tackle an area here in the midsection of the garden because if you might remember last autumn I did a video where I was explaining three things in the garden that I really liked and three things where I know I need to change it a little bit and all those three things that were not so successful happened to be here in the midsection of the garden which is the first area that I ever developed here in the garden and one of those floors is just behind me that is a lawn and I can't do anything about it or it's not even my fault because there was a good work of vowels and molds together because I don't know they have manner whatever they did underneath that turf it is so bumpy I can tell when I'm getting out there at one point to start mowing the lawn this is so difficult in this area because it's yeah it's just a, a racetrack basically but that is on the agenda for later on in this year because you know I've already removed the turf in the back of a garden for the new herbaceous board and I'm, I'm fine I'm all right for now I think I can wait with this project until autumn so this lovely side is going to stay as it is at least for the summertime. What I want to do is take you with me here to the back, in my back where the garden shed is. If you remember, there is a shrub growing that has a really nice texture, just like from the growing habit, but it's not performing well there. It really is not so happy and it's one of those shrubs that just self-seeds everywhere here. So it's not even like a very, very precious thing. So what I want to do, just in case if you haven't seen my previous video, I'll flip the phone and quickly talk you through that area and explain to you what there is and why I want to remove it. Hope you get to see anything because you can tell none of these shrubs here, or the tree in the back, nothing really has leaves yet. So everything is kind of just like a brown jungle at this point, by the way. On the right here, this gnarly looking thing, that is an apple tree and a mistle flew in there. So there are no mistles growing in there. There was a mistle coming from the back of the trees there. But what I want to remove today sits here just next to the garden shed. I'm coming with my finger this here. This is an elder. It's just a common elder and they really sell seed everywhere here. Uh, green leaves and it starts to leave out. So I'm kind of like a little sorry for removing it today. But the thing is, it looks nice up until maybe end of May and then the leaves already start to turn yellow and it doesn't really have a lot of leaves so it's just not really doing its thing. It kind of always looks on the verge of dying. The one thing that I really appreciate about it though is a growing habit because it is a multi-trunk. It has like two big branches and then it kind of like branches out on the top so it is a little vase shape and I think this is just a very very beautiful sight here. Um, that is the reason why I struggled so many years taking it out because I was always hoping that maybe it is going to bounce back Maybe it is going to do something good at one point, but it never really did So today's a point where I will go in here take it out There is already a container standing with something rather small still I think it's like maybe 60 centimeters in height in total uh, Which is going to go in there and what I can tell you as well is oh, look the Christmas tree This is when I tell you like evergreens and conifers they show you that they are not happy delayed and this is exactly what this one does now. I think it sat in a tiny container during winter for too long. I should have definitely potted it up the second I bought it because it is really potted in well. It has beautiful soil now but on the tips you can tell that it starts to turn brown and yellow. So I think this is it for the Christmas tree, I'm afraid. I might need to remove it. But in the end, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's not even a bad thing because then I can go to the garden center and buy one of those. Because just looking at the growing hubbub, this is a, oh my, there is a Caucasian fir over there. That is something else. I think this is a spruce if I'm not wrong. I think. Well, but I just like the growing hubbub a lot better of that one here. So having two 
on each side is nice, but having the same on each side maybe might be even nicer. So, but that is something for another day. I don't even have like a new tree, so I'm still gonna wait and see what's gonna happen with the old Christmas tree. First thing that I'm gonna do is obviously get in here and start removing Oh, start removing this. Let's see how difficult this is going to be. I already have the hatchet ready. So let's see. Very quick, one thing I need to remove is a clematis that grows here just at the base of the elder. You can tell like this brown branch, this is like an old one, but it is starting to come with new fresh green shoots. And it even starts with a fresh new, complete new branch and shoot here from the base. So it is really happy here and I love it. So I need to come in first, remove this, remove the containers, make sure that little Alfie is not eating my lovely, lovely pansies, right? <gasps> you want to eat the pansies, right? Mmm, they might be delicious. All right, I know how I'm gonna start the project. First thing I'm gonna do is get in there, remove the containers, and then I'm gonna lift the clematis. But the clematis won't go back into the exact same location because the new shrub that I wanna plant is still a little bit on the smaller side, and I'm afraid that the clematis might overpower that beauty, and this is nothing I wanna risk. So what I'm gonna do is transplant it to another area of the same border. So here comes my finger. There's an apple tree and there we go. There is a lilac which has established already very well over the past couple of years and I think that they would just make a perfect planting partner because um, this border is uh, party shaded and this is exactly what clematis really appreciate and like. And this has to do with where they originate. The clematis naturally thrive in woodlands, not really inside the woodlands, though so they don't really like to have dapple shade, more towards the edge of the woodlands where woodland start opens up because there they can grow into the canopy of shrubs or trees, but the canopy of the shrubs is gonna provide a lot of shade so that the root system of the clematis still stay nice and cool while the rest of the plant has the ability to grow towards the sun. And this is exactly what they will find here and this is why clematis thrive fairly well in there. After I've transplanted the clematis, then I'm gonna come in with a saw and gonna remove the elder. Let's hope that the root system won't be too big. And after that, I'm finally gonna tell you what I'm actually gonna to plant today. Okay, that took me pretty much one hour to get that dang elder out, especially the stump with all the roots. There was quite a lot of work and there was a momentum when I uh, took the branches to the back of the garden and threw them on a slope. And I walked back, I could really see just the empty wall of the garden shed suddenly. And there was a view that I'm not used to. So I was a little like, oh my, what have I done? Was that such a good idea? It is one of those moments where you just need to tell yourself and use your imagination what I'm going to plant that is going to look so much better and nicer. Yes, it's going to take a couple of years now. So I think to have a really good, nice impact, it's going to be at least four to five years. So I'm not delusional with that, but I know in the long run, it'll be so much nicer. So obviously what I'm going to do, I want to tell you what I want to plant. But at the same time, I thought, I'm going to have a big reveal moment now, but you probably anyways already read the title of the video. So there goes my reveal moment. Still, I'm excited to tell you what I'm gonna plant in this area. 
What I want to plant today is a red bud, and this is the first red bud that I'm introducing to this garden, surprisingly, because according to my research, this is supposed to thrive extremely well here in this area, so I am overly excited about this. This is Tsertsis canadensis, I hope I say this right, Merlot. Merlot is a variety name, and I know I say Merlot, right, just like the red wine, and this is already a good indicator to what kind of foliage color I'm expecting on this one. This is going to have the most beautiful dark red burgundy leaves you can possibly imagine, I think that this is going to be just perfect for this area here of the garden because if you remember hello Alfie now you come with your stick yeah give me your stick then we can play hello okay there you go <laughs> all right so if you remember uh, I planted a lot of tulips with you in the midsection of the garden and most of them are in this, well all of them actually, are in shades of blush, like silvery blush and very dark, kind of like almost black dark purple, Paul Skira is that variety. And the red bud has flowers in pink, apparently in a bluish kind of pink, let's see. But I think it's going to be a very beautiful combination because this comes to flower in around April, May time, I suppose here more in April because everything starts a little later here. Um, but in combination with the tulips, I think that this will be rather beautiful. And the special thing about red bud is that the flowers appear straight on the stem, something that happens on hardly any other shrub. This is really specific for red buds. Um, and they appear before the leaves are appearing, so you really get to enjoy the entire show of these flowers. And I can't wait as, as the shrub matures that you really have this wonderful display of beautiful spring blooms just next to the garden shed here. Um, the foliage, as I said, is very dark and very beautiful, almost sinister colour, but when the first leaves appear, they have a more of a fleshy red tone, and as they age and progress through the year, those leaves, they go darker and a little more in the sinister world. But then in autumn, this shrub is supposed to reward you with a very beautiful autumnal display as well, so the leaves change colour to crimson, which really excites me. So I think there is a lot of interest in this shrub, you know? It has beautiful flowers, it really has very intriguing foliage that even changes color throughout autumn. So I think that this would be just a wonderful shrub for this area here. In theory, this is supposed to thrive three to four meters in height, and it can grow to the same in width. I'm gonna train it, and red buds, they respond fairly well to training. So you can always come in with your pruners and just do your job there. Because what I want to have is a very same shape to what was there already with the elder. So I really want to have this kind of like V or vase shape with some strong branches that are kind of like starting to branch out, almost arching over a little bit and creating a beautiful canopy. Let's see if that is gonna work because I ordered this one online. So there was a stem here and they trimmed it back, which is a little bit of a pity. I hope that there was something more here, but maybe it's going to thrive out from here. There's a tiny little flimsy one. Let's see, there are two strong ones, which is already a good start. I'd be happy if there was a third one because I do not want to have something that looks kind of like this tree with a trunk and then just like the crown on top of it. I really want to have something that was just there because it is almost like the entrance to the back garden here from the midsection of the garden. And I think something that has multi branches and starts arching over gives you the sensation of stepping into a new area of the garden. Um, one thing where I think this is going to thrive extremely well here is soil conditions because red buds, they really appreciate a light, lofty, do I dare to say sandy soil? So this is exactly what I have. They do not like to sit in a puddle. They don't thrive extremely well on heavy clay, for example. So this is perfect for me. They can cope extremely well with long periods of drought and no watering, which is also good because I have nothing on irrigation and I hardly ever remember to water anything. So this should be, in theory, a very happy camper here. In uh, terms of roots, this uh, has very long roots, like a fleshy leader root, pretty much the same to what the peach had, but since the roots on the elder were so established, it really needed to get in there and dig quite a deep, big hole in general and come in with two bags of fresh garden compost. Dug it all under so the entire area, the salt is really lovely lofting up already, quite deep and wide as well, so I don't need to do anything else, but in theory, if you just have a tiny planting hole, really, Make it big, always make it at least triple the size of the container, where here this is a quite small container. So I think my planting hole is at least 10 times, even more, I think probably 20 times of this container. Speaking of container, I haven't checked the roots yet. So this is honestly going to be quite an intriguing moment. The top part looks very nice and lovely. And I can tell you that there are already first signs of life appearing. So it's good to put it in the ground now. Let's see, let's gently tip it over and see what I find in here. That looks good. Okay, I'm not going to take it out completely because I just watered it and I'm going to give you a closer look when I plant it. Roots are looking good. 
thick, robust, strong, and the lovely thing is they're not pot bound. So pot bound is when the roots start growing round and round a pot. And that is always a little bit like, ooh, difficult, what do you do? You can come in and just break them apart, but what you can do as well, especially on a shrub in this stage when it doesn't have no leaves yet, you can really just wash off all the soil and try to untangle all of these pot bound roots bit by bit. Oh, he's just waiting there, sorry. First things first, right? So untangle those roots so there's no soil because there is anyways not a lot of soil on this container uh, and then just really put it in the ground and just try to place those so uh, roots where you want to have them just as a second idea as well if you don't want to come in there and break those pot bound roots one last thing I want to say is winter protection because this uh, red bud, especially when it is young, you should give it a little bit of a winter protection, um, especially in the first years. Once it has matured, you don't need to do it. And I try to remind myself, this is a sheltered area of the garden though in general because it is, um, it gets a lot of light during the winter time, which is good. And it has a protection from the garden shed in the back. So I think it should be quite happy in this area. What I'm going to do though is that I will move it a little bit towards the front and the side of the bed because red buds, they thrive best in full sun and partly shade as well though. So this is more of a partly shade area throughout winter. It is almost full sun, but in summer it is more partly shade, which is still perfect for a red bud but I think I'm going to expect a little less growth in general. This is supposed to grow 20 centimeters to maybe 40 centimeters per year. I think it's going to grow just 20 centimeters in general uh, just because it is more in a party shaded area here but I'm going to see, I'm going to see, I'm going to tell, I'm going to give you updates. I can't wait for it to grow and do its business though because I really think that this is just the perfect shrub for that area. I've really spent almost an entire year trying to find something, done a lot of research and I'm confident and I think that this ticks all of the boxes pretty much that I was looking for. Super happy. So what I'm going to do is finally get it into the ground now. and whatever I plant something, I always plant it to dead level. And this is exactly what I'm going to do with this one as well. Very quickly, what I did after I removed the elder is I also removed some of the native soil here because our soil is quite sandy. And then I came in with bags of fresh garden compost, some good hands full of organic bone chips, dug it all under, mix it with the native soil here. So the entire area is prepared and ready for planting. The shrub is planted and the pots are back in the border. I think it was really nice, but you know what the best thing of the day was? You might think planting was the best part of the day, but no, I just had a quick lunch break with Alfie because my phone died. So I was like, okay, since the phone's charging, I could just have a lovely lunch break up there. And it was just glorious because there's no wind. The sun is nice and warming. And that was just the perfect best thing of the entire day. Now, honestly, so far my past videos, when I was out, I was always out and I thought, Oh God, it's cold. I can't wait to go back inside again. And now are those days of the year where you feel like I just want to spend the entire day outside and make the most out of it. And that is just glorious. So obviously what I'm going to do now, flip the phone and show you the result of what I planted. Don't be too disappointed because you, it's not so much of an impact. You're not going to see a lot at this moment. I'm not delusional. I mean, I could have just stuck two branches into the soil and say like, ta-da, I planted something. But I know something is going to happen. It's going to start flower eventually, at least it's going to have leaves at one point this year. It's going to thrive and in a couple of years from now I can show you how lovely it looks. All right, luckily I have those containers and also luckily I planted this really beautiful viburnum back there with you. Just look at those flowers. Now at this time of the day, they're really glowing in the sun. They're so gorgeous. Every single time I have a stroll through the garden, I'm very happy with that one. And I think I'm gonna be very happy with the um, red bud as well, once it has established. I mean, honestly, I need to show you even with a finger where it is, I think like here's a stem and there's a stem. It looks so spindly, almost like nothing. But I know, it's gonna thrive, it's gonna be beautiful, it needs to take a while, but I think it is a perfect location for it because you can tell it's kind of like green, green, green everywhere here. Well, and a lot of brown as well at this time of the year still, but at one point it will be surrounded by green. And I think then having something as a dark foliage accent here will be just beautiful. One last thing I quickly wanna show you, this is actually towards the front of the border here. You might remember, in autumn I planted some anemones with you and I have a mix of 
white flowering geraniums in here and they always come back very beautiful this time of the year and with the anemones i was not sure because i was like oh my god it's just like brown it kind of looks dead so i just went in here i'm not sure if you can see anything but these tiny things and flashes of green are the first leaves so they made it through winter i'm so excited about that because i really love those pink geraniums here and i think they will be just wonderful with the dark foliage of the red bot as well take a look who's protecting her branch I think when I go down, she might be less like, yeah, see, she sees it, she's excited. She's like, oh yeah, play with me, play with me. Yeah, we're gonna play in a second, yay. Ooh, you wanna play, right? All right, Alfie's in a playing mood and so am I. I suppose I am, or at least I have to be because little Missy is just sitting down there now looking at me, kind of like, play with me. So this is what I'm gonna do. I just quickly wanna say thank you so much for watching today's video. This is part one of planting any kind of shrubs and hardwoods together with you in the garden. There's a lot of more exciting things on their way. I already put them in the back of a garden because you know there is a new herbaceous border on its way and herbaceous implements that I cannot only plant perennials and grasses as much as I love them. No, I'm also gonna plant some hardwoods in there. Really exciting things on their way. Hope that you will join me on those videos as well. Take care guys. Bye.